around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> You here? Yeah, I'm here, Doc. Come on in. <laughs> oh, well, how come you're in bed so early? I'm not in bed, Doc. I'm just resting. Oh, I did that, man. Oh, I see the cost of government's going up again. Oh, what makes you say that? The soles of your boots. They're worn almost through. I don't care. <laughs> What's the matter? Aren't you feeling good? Sure, I feel fine, Doc. I always lie in bed till noon. Uh-huh. Well, it just doesn't look right for you to be lying down like this. Yes. Oh, for heaven's sake. What's the matter now? It's cold. The coffee's cold in the rattlesnake's belly. Don't drink it, sir. And it's no better hot here. No, Matt, like I was saying, a man in your position should have more to do than just lie around. Oh, maybe I'm just tired, Doc. Oh, now, don't try to tell me it was brought on by upholding law and order all night, because I don't want to hear about it. I had a bad night myself. Well, then sit on and rest. Yes, I think I will. Aren't you going to ask me what I was doing? No. You're not? Well, I spent the whole night working for $4 fees. Oh, well, it must have been somebody who didn't know you. Then. They knew it was Jeb Dorn. His wife had a baby girl. Jeb, huh? He was hoping for a boy, as I recall it. And that's what worries me. Oh, why? He refused to pay me. <laughs> no wonder you're tired. Hey, baby. What's this thing? Oh. Well, who's this poster on? It says right there, doesn't it? Uh, yes, it does. Wanted, dead or alive, Jack... Cargo for the torture and subsequent murder of... Uh, so, 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 so. This man is noted for armed holdup and is believed heading in the general direction of Missouri, Kansas, or Nebraska. Oh, he's a mean-looking devil, isn't he? Uh-huh. Well, I can see that here will certainly find his comeuppance if he sticks his head in Dodge City. Well, I'll tell you, Doc, I'll worry about that if he comes here. Huh? Oh, well. That gives me a nice, safe feeling. Marshal, here is he. Yeah, yeah, I'm the marshal. I say, Marshal Proudfoot, hereabouts is he. Marshal Proudfoot? Huh? Oh, no, neither one of you. I say neither one of you ain't the marshal, I can tell. I was Pa. I'd know him anywhere. Uh, Doc, uh, yeah. go find Chester, will you? Uh, sure, Matt. Uh, no, no, no need to get up. Just come see my boy, Marshal Chester Proudfoot. Made good somehow, he did. <laughs> Chester never was one of my brightest boys. Eleven boys I had, I remember. Say, I ain't your hand here yet. Oh, what's your name, sonny? Dillon. Uh, Matt Dillon. Did all? Ah, a funny name for a man. I knew a man one time had the name of Hairgrove. Hairgrove. <laughs> I thought that was the funniest up till now, but did uh, Doc, <laughs> uh, you better go get Chester. Yeah, yeah, Who's yeah. that fella? Well, that's Doc Adams. Yeah. Nice to know you, sir. Saying something, is he? I said it's nice. Now, to my name's Wesley Proudfoot. Sire to Marshall, turns out. Yes, sir. Eleven boys I had. Chester was nowhere near the brightest. No, sir, he'd rate about number nine there. Oh, that's very interesting, yeah. Mr. Chester, Proudfoot. Chester bordered on being ignorant, I'd think. Oh, no, no. I can't no. imagine how he ever got to be a marshal. Chester Wesley Proudfoot. Marshal of Dodge City. Well, Look, uh, <laughs> Mr. Proudfoot. They I... named all them boys with the middle name of Wesley. After me, it did. Hoped at least one of them would mount something, <laughs> like me. Yeah. 
What'd you say your name was? It's Adams. Dr. Adams. Dr. Adams. Horse or people? Uh, what? What's the matter with you? I say, do you doctor horses or people? Yeah. People. Oh, well, it's too bad for you. I wouldn't ever let a people doctor work on me, and I got a great many things wrong with me, too. Hey, where's Chester? Well, he's out getting the mail for me. Well, good for him. Got spunk. Probably running down some of them bad men he always writes about. Used to have an assistant named uh, Dylan working for him. Whatever become of him? Dylan, that, uh, that, that's me, Mr. Proudfoot. Matt Dillon, that's yeah. me. Oh, yeah. Well, you do a fair job, Gordon Chester. Says he can usually depend on you. Well, that's very nice of him. Uh, look, Mr. Proudfoot, maybe you should know something. I... Ah, hello, Doc. Yeah, Chester. Hey. There wasn't none too much mail, Mr. Dillon. Forget it, Chester. Why? Chester, you've got company. Who's a fat fella? That's Chester. That's the Marshal Proudfoot. Mm. Paul, you know, Mr. Dillon, I... Oh, Paul, I... That you, Chester? Yeah, that's him, Mr. Proudfoot. Ah, you fatted up a good deal, Chester. Your assistant here looks better than you do. I'd like an explanation. Matter of fact, so would I, Chester. Oh. Mr. Dillon, uh, Doc, I... Oh, Paul. Now, some folks, I guess, think that the stamps are just for licking. And some go in for that philately stuff. You know, looking for misprints and hard-to-get ones. But me... Well, I just collect them for fun. But I learned a lot that way, and maybe you can too. Now, that's because our United States stamps all got the stamp of history on them. If, uh, if you got a minute, I'll open my album here and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Let's see here. Uh-huh. Ah, now, here. Here's a four-cent one the post office put out in 1962 for the 75th anniversary of the Association of State Universities and Land-Grant Colleges. <laughs> I, I ain't had any of that higher education myself, but I know it's mighty important in making your way these days, and you're never too old to learn. No, even from stamps. Found out from this one that Abe Lincoln signed the Land-Grant Act into law during the Civil War. Now, that act still gives the money from sale and use of public lands to help make 68 colleges and universities some of the biggest and finest we've got. And seeing as how they've turned out 25 of our 42 living Nobel Prize winners, I guess you could just say it's paid off real good. What are you going to do about Matt? Do about what, Doc? Chester, telling his father that he's the marshal. What can I do? Well, not going to let him get by with it, are you? Oh, I don't know, Doc. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute, Matt. Wait, no, no, no. Let me by. No? An assistant doesn't make too much, you know. <laughs> Easy, Doc. Hello, Doc. Matt. Hello, oh, Kitty. Doc, you're looking pretty strange today. How come? Yeah. Tell her, Matt. You tell her, Doc. You're the one looking strange. Well, come on. Somebody tell me. Yeah. Sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have you seen Chester, Kitty? No. Why? Yeah, we may never see him again. What? What happened? Well, not much, really, but I'm sure he wishes he was dead right now. Oh, what's this all about? Chester's father came to town today. Well, what's so terrible about that? Well, so t- he thinks Chester is the marshal here. What? Yeah, that's right, Kitty. Chester wrote to his father, and he probably stretched the truth a little bit, like we all do sometimes. Oh, no. Well, where are they now? Over at the Dodge house. He's getting the old man a room there. Yeah, I never saw Chester look so scared in my life, Kitty. <laughs> you should have seen him. He grabbed his paw, and he lit out of the office like his coat was on fire. Oh, don't be hard on him, Matt. I'm not going to be hard on him. Well, his father must be pretty old. Oh, he's older, I guess. He can't hear good and he can hardly see. But he's a bright old fellow. 
Well, you can't let the old man be disappointed, Matt. Well, what would you suggest I do, Kitty? I don't know. Just don't hurt him, that's all. I'm not going to hurt him, Kitty. I don't care if the old man thinks Chester's a marshal. Uh, Matt, we should think of something to make Chester look good while his father's in town. Yeah. I heard the old man tell Chester that he was only going to stay for a few days. Oh, see, Matt. Now, maybe you could lie low for a while. I wouldn't mind that. I need a rest. Hey, I got it. Why don't you get somebody to pretend to hold up and then let Chester play marshal and take him in? You can turn him loose when his father leaves. Oh, now, Kitty, I couldn't do a thing like that. Well, something's got to be done, Matt. Yes, did you? I, I could put you to bed, Matt. What are you talking about, Doc? Yeah, you get sick and I'll examine you and say that you've got a, oh, a, a rare blood disease and you have to go to bed for a few days. It might work, Matt. Oh, you can't let that old man go away thinking Chester's been lying to him all this time. No. We'll get Moss Grimmett to stage a fake holdup, you see. Then we'll come and get Chester, and right in front of his father, he'll capture the bandit. You're the one with a rare disease, Doc, and it's not in your blood, it's in your brain. I do it, Matt. You got to. No, I don't got to. I don't want any part of a fake holdup. Now, you just get that out of your head. Oh, so. Matt. <laughs> Well, I'm going back to the office. Oh, Let's sure, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Ruin an old man in his last days. Uh, what do you think, Doc? Ed, I... Old oh, Matt will come around all right, Kitty. He always does. I'll go talk to Moss Grimmick and, and have it all set. <laughs> Anybody here? I say anybody in here? Or the... Oh, there you are, Dylan. Well, oh, took to your bed kind of early, didn't you? It ain't but four o'clock. Hello, Mr. Proudfoot. Where's Chester? Yes. Well, I guess you got such a dead little town on your hand, you can do that, you and Chester. I say, where is Chester? Saying something? I said, where's Chester? Don't yell like that. Hurts my ear pan when you bell around like that. You've got a pretty big voice on you there, Dylan. What's the matter with you? Ah, uh, feeling poorly, are you? I say feeling poorly, are you? I feel terrible. Ah, uh, too bad. Chester ain't feeling too good, neither. Oh. Oh, been lolling around on my bed over at the ruin house all day. Good thing you boys got this dead town on your hands. Yeah. Ah, uh, people be up the creek with both the marshal and his sister in bed. Ooch over there. I say, ooch over there. Let me take a look at you. Let me look at your eyes. Tell everything about how a man feels by looking to his... Look at me, Dylan. I can't help looking at you. That's Mr. it. Robert. That's coming. Yes, sir. You've got bad eyes there, Dylan. That one in particular. You've got a good voice, but bad eyes. Them eyes remind me of Chester's Uncle Hector. Last time he looked all slack-jawed like that, he died the next day. Huh? What's that? Uh, no, nothing. I didn't say anything. Oh, thought you talked. No. Yes, sir. Hector was Chester's fighting uncle. Reckon that's where Chester gets all his get up and go. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, well, some different, though. Hector fought again the law, Hector did. Ever seen a man stirred up again the law all the time like old Hector was? Have you had your Hated dinner yet, Mr. Proctor? Yeah, oh, indeed. He was a winner. You're right there. Won all his battles. Killed two marshals. Hector did. Killed them dead. Good thing Chester's on the side of the law. Man, that's a peril I got ought to be on the side of the law. Hey, I'm Matt, you Chester here? ought to be. Oh, oh, God. Oh. Hello, Mr. Proudfoot. Do what? <laughs> oh, you're here. Yes. Look here, you got a sick deputy here, Adams. Better go get a horse doctor and get him straightened out. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing in bed, Matt? I'm in bed because I'm sick, Doc. Did you ever hear of anything like that? You're sick? Uh-huh. You are, Matt? Oh, oh, see, that's fine. Yeah, well, I figured you'd think so. Doc, would you do me a favor and take Mr. Proudfoot out to dinner? Anything, just get him out of here. Yeah, sure, Matt. You bet you... Oh, see, your eyes look kind of beady there. Yeah, well, we've been yeah, through all yeah, that. Well, if I didn't know that, uh, I'd say that you had a fever. Adams, I say you got a sick boy there, Adams. Doc, would you go right now? Yeah, okay, oh, sure. Uh, Mr. Proudfoot, you Where come with me. Come with me, Mr. Proudfoot. I'll take you to dinner. Yeah, dinner? Oh, no, too early for dinner. Take a little glass of Dutch water with you, though, but don't let on Chester, will you? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. I'll see you later, Matt, and uh, I'll uh, I'll let Kitty know you're with us. Oh, fine, Doc. Good. good. Yeah. You, you let Kitty know I'm with you. Yes, you just fine. go. Yes, sir, Adam. That boy there is sicker than a pig. 
Let Kitty know I'm with you. Doc! Doc, you come back here! Hometowns in America have a lot in common, and yet they're each one of a kind. Take, for example, Chicago, Illinois. The land of the Spiegel catalog and the Playboy Bunny Beacon is a toddling town. And at the summer music festivals in Grand Park, the price is right. But standing at Marshall Field on State and Randolph, you're on the windiest corner in the world as your body braces for the blast. The colorful neighborhoods of the West Side are gone to urban development. But the University of Illinois is getting a new campus there. In theater, there's the second city on the near north side, or the theater on the lake in Lincoln Park. Shopping in the suburbs offers Old Orchard in Skokie, Randhurst in Mount Prospect, and Oak Brook near Hinsdale. Chicago can't win them all, though. In 1948, the Tribune said, Dewey defeats Truman. And in the fall of 66, the convention center burned. But if your hometown is Chicago, you already know this. We only wanted to remind you, it's still there. Kitty. Doc. Where's Doc? Doc? I don't know, Matt. He was here a little while ago. Why? Well, I've wasted a half hour looking at all the Eden houses for him. He's got Chester's father with him. i got to stop him. Stop him from what? From that fool idea that you and he had. What do you mean, fool idea? Doc came by and said it was on, that you were playing sick in bed. Kitty, I was in bed because I really was sick, and I still am sick. Oh. Have you and Doc lost your senses? Well, we're just trying to help Chester, that's all. Now, look, what if somebody else sees that hold-up Moss Grimmick at stage, and how do they know that he's just playing games? Huh? Doc and I aren't going to let anybody get hurt, Matt. And you know, Chester, he'll play along all the way. That's exactly what I'm afraid of. Hello, Kitty. <laughs> all set, Kitty. Uh, oh, hello, Matt. Yeah. Oh, you're on your feet for the fun. You call this thing off right now, Doc. Oh, no, no, no. It's too late, Matt. Chester and his father up at the Dodge House in exactly three minutes from now, Moss Grimmick is going to rush up there and say there's a hold up at the livery stable. And I'm putting a stop to it before somebody gets... What? What's that? I don't know. It's not time yet. Oh, come on, Doc. You can watch the fun you started. Yes, sir. Come on. You know, something ought to knock your head off for this. Now, Matt, now take it easy, Matt. Marshal Dillon. What? You better hurry. Chester just shot a man at the Dodge House. Good Lord. Come on, let me through here, will you please? Move aside. Let me through. Stand there, Matt. Matt, wait. Oh, look. Chester's sitting on somebody. Chester, what are you doing? Get off of that man. Doc, check that one line Doc. over there. Will you? I will. He shot and wounded one fellow, and we subdued the other one. All right, Mr. Cole, we did. Ain't, ain't a bad night's work, is no, it? No, Chester, will you get up? Well, Mr. Dillon, he, he tried to kill me and Paul. Get up, I said. He's unconscious. Oh, Matt, wait a minute. Look here. What is it, Doc? Look at this man. It's Jack Pargo. What? You know the man on that wanted poster? Yeah, that is Pargo, all right. What's the matter, Dylan? That fellow friend of yours, is he? He tried to hold up the hotel office here. No, Mr. Proudfoot, it's not a friend of mine. Huh? What say? Or anybody catch that car, hey. man? Oh, Chester! What? Chester! Uh, <coughs> Hurry up, Chester! There's a hold up at the livery stable. Moss, oh, no. go home. Yeah, but my doc told me that Just I... go back to your livery stable and call off the hold up, huh? Yeah, yeah, forget it, Moss, forget it. We've had the real thing right well, here. Well, well, well... Goodbye, Moss. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, goodbye, goodbye. I'm... Yeah. Goodbye. Yes, yes goodbye. Wait, what... Our fuller come here. Notice something here, did you, Dylan? Chester was right on the spot. He was. That's the reason he took my bed for so long. Uh huh. He got an instinct for these things. Chester has put him right here on the spot for this hold up. Now there's a reason for everything. I always say. Yeah, Dylan. well, there's a reason, all right. right what say, Dylan? Mister Dylan, I can explain all this. I... No, Chester. You and your father take care of things here. I'm sick and I'm going to bed. Don't count on me taking care of things, Dylan. I'm leaving on the morning stage. Now I saw my boy in action. Yeah, well, all right, Mr. Proudfoot. Goodbye and good luck to you. Uh, you, you wait right here a minute, Paul. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what? Mr. Dillon, 
Mr. Dillon, I can explain. You don't have to, Chester. But, yes, sir, I do have to explain. I, I swear I've never been so humiliated in all my whole life. I've been thinking about it all day, Mr. Dillon. I, I, I never wrote but two letters to Paul, and, well, maybe I did stretch a couple things, but Paul, he... Well, Paul, he, he put it all together and made me out more important than what I am. But I'll set him straight, Mr. Dillon. Honest, I will. I'll tell him the truth, and I'll do it right now. Chester. You do, and you're fired. Now, you go on back and help your father take care of things. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. When I want an example of how a term or phrase is used, I generally find a colorful example in some speech of that old political character, Elijah Cuddlestone. For instance, now I admit, I say of course, I'm a, I'm a grassroots candidate. I work from the bottom up. That is, I get down to the basics of a matter, down to the grassroots. Now I want to know how I, I mean, you're my people, and I insist on knowing how you might be affected. That is why you elected me, because I am one of you, and it's like I say, I am elected by you (laughs) and working for you. Well, getting down to grassroots seems to be what politicians and office seekers report themselves as doing most any time, but uh, more especially preceding an election. It's a folksy American phrase that simply means getting down to the underlying principles or basic facts of a matter and may be used at any time by anyone. The actual origin of the phrase is unknown, but its reported usage predates 